Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. The New York Times has one of the worst climate articles I've ever seen. Let's read through it. How scientists got climate change so wrong. Few thought it would arrive so quickly. Now we're facing consequences once viewed as fringe scenarios. For decades, most scientists saw climate change as a distant prospect. Now we know that thinking was wrong. This summer, for instance, a heat wave in Europe penetrated the Arctic, pushing temperatures into the 80s across much of the far north and, according to the Belgian climate scientist Xavier Fettweiss, melting some 40 billion tons of Greenland's ice sheet. And a scientist in the early 1990s suggested that within 25 years, a single heat wave would measurably raise sea levels at an estimated two one-hundredths of an inch, bake the Arctic, and produce Sahara-like temperatures in Paris and Berlin. The prediction would have been dismissed as alarmist, but many worst-case scenarios from that time are now realities. Let's take a look now at some of these claimed New York Times realities. Here's a story from 1927 about some people who drove 270 miles north of the Arctic Circle. September 30, 1927, women motorists, Arctic and Australian trips, through Belgium, Holland, Germany, Denmark, Lapland, and Finland, the motor party journeyed to 270 miles north of the Arctic Circle, prepared for freezing weather. To their continued astonishment, the temperature was never less than 90 degrees in the shade. Now let's go back and look at what the New York Times said. The New York Times made it sound like 80 degrees in the Arctic is unusual. But it's not at all unusual. These women in 1927 never saw temperatures less than 90 degrees. Here's another story from 1927 of a child sunbathing near the North Pole. The short summers of the Arctic are very warm, and this youngster sitting in the sunlight needs no protection from the cold. The picture was taken as near to the North Pole as Panama is to the equator. This graph from NASA shows solar radiation received on the Earth's surface. Across the x-axis is the date, and across the y-axis is latitude, going from the South Pole up to the North Pole. You can see from this white dot that the North Pole during the summer receives a lot of solar energy, more than any place else on Earth at that time of year. So it shouldn't be surprising to anyone that temperatures can get very warm in the Arctic. The sun is at a low angle, but it's shining 24 hours a day. Here's another story from 1937, a hot story from the Arctic. Weather stations on the Yukon River in the Arctic have reported temperatures of more than 100 degrees in the shade. The New York Times wants people to believe that 80 degrees in the Arctic is a crisis, when in fact it's actually a fairly common event. Next, let's look at the New York Times claim that 40 billion tons of Greenland's ice sheet melted. This graph is from the Danish Meteorological Institute and shows the surface mass balance for Greenland. It shows the difference between how much snow falls on Greenland and how much melts off the surface. The graph covers a 12-month period from the beginning of September until the end of August the following year. Along the y-axis is billions of tons of snow and ice. The dark ring line represents the 1981 to 2010 average. And the light gray line represents the surface mass balance from September 1st, 2018 until August 31st of this year. The gray band represents what's considered to be the normal range. During the winter, there's no melting going on, and snow simply accumulates on the surface from about September 1st until the end of May. But starting in June every year, Greenland starts melting, and they lose a fair amount of snow and ice during the summer months. And then at the end of the year, we get the final surface mass balance for the entire 12-month period. On average, Greenland surface gains nearly 400 billion tons of snow and ice every year. But this past year was much lower. They only gained about half as much snow and ice as they usually do. However, it was well within the normal range. If Greenland gained 400 billion tons of new ice every year, the ice would keep piling up deeper and deeper until it got up to the top of the troposphere. Obviously, though, that isn't happening. What actually happens is that the excess snow piles up, turns into glaciers, flows to the sea, and calves off icebergs into the ocean. That's how Greenland maintains its equilibrium. It can receive a lot more snow every year than melts due to the glacial calving process. And what the New York Times failed to mention is that during the previous two years, 2017 and 2018, the surface mass balance was well above normal in Greenland. 
So over the last three years, Greenland's surface has actually gained more snow and ice than normal. Next, let's look at the daily surface mass balance gain and loss. The blue line represents this year. Greenland just had two days in a row where they gained nearly 10 billion tons of new snow. Going back to the previous graph, let's look at the blue line again, which represents this year. Since September 1st, Greenland has gained nearly 200 billion tons of new snow and ice. Now let's go back to the New York Times claim that Greenland lost 40 billion tons of ice last year. It's difficult to know whether or not that number is true because measuring glacial calving is actually very difficult. But as we just saw, Greenland frequently gains 10 billion tons of new snow from a single snowstorm. And it's happened the last two days in a row. This 40 billion tons number sounds really big until you look at it in context. It's actually a minuscule fraction of all of the snow and ice in the Greenland ice sheet. If Greenland actually lost 40 billion tons of ice every year, it would still take many thousands of years for the ice sheet to disappear. And the 40 billion tons number is probably wrong anyway. So once again, the New York Times is trying to get their readers hysterical over a non-event. Next, let's look at their claim that a single heat wave raised sea levels. They claim that sea level rose by two one hundredths of an inch, which is about half a millimeter. To put this in perspective, let's look at the tide gauge data for New York going back to the year 1850. New York regularly gets spikes up and down as much as 300 millimeters, but the New York Times is getting hysterical about half a millimeter change in sea level? That's not even measurable. The ocean surface has waves much larger than that. This is just more out of context fake news from the New York Times. And finally, let's look at their claim about Sahara-like temperatures in Paris. This graph shows Paris daily summer temperatures for three different years. It shows 1911 in blue, 1947 in red, and 2019 in green. You can see that the hottest day this summer in green was a little bit hotter than the hottest day in 1947. But all three years there were very similar heat waves around the end of July. It's not really that unusual for the jet stream to bring hot air from the Sahara Desert up into Paris for a day or two during the summer. It happened in 1911, it happened in 1947, it happened in 2003, and it happened this year. It's not a climate crisis, it's just ordinary weather. This graph shows the total number of days over 90 degrees at Paris every year going back to the year 1900. You can see that both 1947 and 1911 had many more hot days in Paris than this year. The 1911 heat wave killed more than 40,000 people in Paris. And the summer of 1911 also brought extremely hot weather to the United States. New England had their worst heat wave on record. They had temperatures over 100 degrees in May that year, and a lot of people died. And July 4, 1911 was the hottest on record in the United States. The New York Times is trying to get the public hysterical over fairly ordinary weather events. Nothing they say here shows any indication of a climate crisis. Something very wrong is going on here, and we need to find out if they're just ignorant or if they're intentionally misinforming the public. George Orwell said, Early in life I've noticed that no event is ever correctly reported in a newspaper. I saw newspaper reports which did not bear any relation to the facts, not even the relationship which is implied in an ordinary lie. That's exactly what we see going on with this article from the New York Times. They're trying to get people hysterical over complete nonsense. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.